From this point, we're going to continue on and keep building. We're adding to our ticker here. This time, instead of going from left to right, we're actually going to create a scrolling ticker that goes up and pauses. So to begin again, we're going to start with a design and I'm just going to slide a main group down here and let's just call this anything. For me, I'm just going to call this one side scroll and I'm going to throw my design and my scroller elements within this group. So first, let's just do something simple with the design. And again, if you want to organize it a little bit more, we can. I'm just going to throw that in there. I'm going to go into my built ins, my global primitives, and let's find a rectangle. Again, not concentrating too much on design. We just want to do something simple so we get the fundamentals. So what I'm going to do is use this rectangle and just use the color within the rectangle itself. I'm going to turn on my color wheel and let's just make this uh, dark black or something like that. You can do whatever color you want. So I'm just going to reposition this and scale it. So let's just scale this a little bit and we'll move this down to the lower left and the theory is is that I just want some cities to scroll up from the bottom and pause here so I'm just going to use this as a backplate I definitely want it in front of my object or my other backplate so I'm just going to also move this up a couple in Z space and again why not just uh, outline it so that we'll see it a little bit better so I have within my options here a material I'm just going to throw that on there or if you want we could actually just change the color of our rectangle here by using the built-in color wheel so I can just make this green and slide the other arrows down as well I'm going to use the expert here which I have in my favorites and drag that onto my rectangle and I'm going to turn on outline and if we want to adjust the outline width we can as well okay so now I have my design and what I basically want to do is go get my scroller again so I'm gonna go into my built-ins again yours is probably found within the global primitives depending which artist version you're using mine is in this little ticker folder so I'm gonna go ahead and drag this scroller down into my side scroll again I have my bounding boxes here which I'm just going to kind of ignore for the moment for the meantime, what I want to do is figure out how I want this to animate on. So I'm going to go ahead and use my design group here to just animate it. I'm going to set a keyframe where it is. I'm going to rewind it and let's just have it coming up from the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and move my rectangle down to the bottom. I'm going to hit set key. So I hit continue. It's going to come up like that. Now I'm going to click on my design animation and go into the stage. Again, I need to make a brand new director. So I'm going to slide this D button or you can just click it to create a new director. I'm going to right click to rename it and let's just call this anything that we want. I'm going to keep it consistent and just call it side. I want to slide my animation in there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the animation within my container and it highlights it in the stage. Now I'm going to slide it into my new director. Again, we need to make some stop points for this. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the side director. I'm going to create a stop point. First stop point, I'm going to call O. And then I'm going to make another stop point here. And again, keeping naming consistent, I'm just going to call this something like side one. Okay, at this point, if we want to go back into our scroller, we can start filling out our information. So first I'm going to turn on show advanced and again our element source relates back to our stop point which is side one. Our layer relates to our director which is side. So before I turn this button active what I need to do is actually decide our mode and our direction again. The mode I want as a scrolling ticker, our direction however I want to go up this time instead of left to right. Now I'm going to come down here and turn our active button to on our next step will be to create a template here to fill our crawl and before I do anything else I'm just going to add a group here and let's just call this something like side group. I'm going to go ahead and grab a font slide it underneath this group and again if we want to call this something like city name or whatever you're going to put in here we can. I have my text in here so I'm just going to go into the text editor and let's just put some type of name in here type in New York my ticker templates currently hidden so if it is for you too I'm just going to turn that on and again if we want to just kind of measure up our size here we can kind of move this over here for the time being make sure our Z position is up so that we can see it and let's just say I want to place my text randomly like that okay the size looks good right change that to texture I'm going to come back and reset my Y position and leave it as is 
Okay, so initially, if you're not sure where to place this, it's okay. That's why we're going to go back and test it and tweak it. But before we do anything else, what we need to do is actually add a control text in here. So I'm going to go into my plugins folder, into my control folder, and drag the control text onto my city name. So I'm going to go ahead and change my field identifier if I need to. I'm going to keep mine at one again. I have a description here, city name. That's fine. I'm going to take my object take it off of the top main ticker templates group and slide it onto my side group. I'm going to slide this object that's on the ticker template to the trash and I'm going to go into my object here and fill out a name. So let's just call this side group. Now if we want to start testing this to see actually where the placement is, I'm going to come down here to my scroller. I'm going to replace this element source again with parentheses side group parentheses and we're going to reinitialize and trigger. So now we have uh, some text coming up here. And what we can do is actually hide our ticker templates. And now we can come in here and tweak in here. So I'm going to move this down a little bit. Let's go into our scroller. And if we want to increase the scroll region height, we can do that, which will increase the height of the scroller. We can also mess with the scroll speed. So right now, I'm just going to keep it at 0.5 minimum spacing we can add 20 again and some padding we can add 20 again now from here it's all designed so for instance I may not like how this text here is just getting cut off like that so what you can do is actually go into one of your plugins and use some type of mask to kind of mask that off I can use the frame mask here I'll drop it right on my scroller and we'll come in here to the top edge and we'll slide this down until we start seeing something disappear so right there, you can see it's sliding off. And if I want to adjust the bottom edge too, I can do that so that we're only getting this. At this point, I want to introduce one new plugin in here, which could help you in your design as well. So within my plugins tab here, I have a folder here called Ticker, and I have this little plugin called Scroller Action. If you're using versions earlier than 3.6, your Scroller Action will probably be found in the Tools folder. Mine, however, is in this ticker folder. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to slide it down onto my side group. Now, basically, what this scroller action is going to do is allow us to pause this New York or this city name here where we want it. To do that, I'm actually going to use the scroll speed animation to control it. So I'm going to come into my scroller here. I'm going to go into the scroll speed. And here I have it set to 0 0.5. I'm going to rewind my timeline to zero. And I'm going to set a keyframe for that. I'm going to advance my timeline then back to 30 or 60 or whatever you're using. I'm setting all of my animations to 30 fields. I'm going to put my scroll speed to zero and hit set key. You can see that we now have an animation on our scroller. If I click on this animation, it takes us into the stage. Now I'm going to make a brand new director here and we're going to call this side anim for instance hit enter and I'm going to slide my animation in there so my scroller or scroller speed is going into my side anim director again I need to make some stop points here so I'm going to highlight my side anim director rewind my timeline hit stop this time we're going to do this whole naming convention a little bit different we're not going to worry about O or outs this time it can actually be called anything. So this is my first stop point. You can see that my speed here is set to five. So I'm gonna name my first stop point play. And then I'm gonna come down to my other keyframe, which is set to zero. I'm gonna set a stop point on that. And I'm gonna hit or name this one stop. So I'm gonna go back into my scroller action plugin here and we need to fill this out. The first thing that we have here is delay or frames. So I'm just going to pick a random number of how many frames I want this to delay. Let's type in 100. Once we do that, we get two more options here. It says on inside action and after delay action. Well, on the inside action, I want to change it to animate. And once I do that, you can see that we still have more to fill out here. So on inside director refers to our director name, which is side anim. So I'm going to type in side underscore anim here on inside from tag, which means the stop point, which we named play. I'm going to come back into my scroller action and name this one play, all capitals, because again, naming conventions are quite specific in here. 
So our inside to tag is called stop. Now I'm going to go down to the after delay action. I'm going to turn animate on again and basically fill out the exact same information. This time after delay director, again it's side anim. One thing that we're going to do different is actually reverse the from tag and the to tag. So our from tag this time is going to be stop and our to tag is going to be play. Now before I get ready to save this, I actually want to go back and just make sure that our scroller has the right information. We did fill out this element source to actually just to test it. So what I need to do is actually change it back to side one, which reflects our stop point within the stage. We do have it active, that looks good. And if we need to reinitialize this, we can. Okay, from here, we're at the point where we can save this and then take this into template wizard and ticker client to actually test this so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save the scene and we're going to jump back into template wizard. Before I do that though, make sure you put your artist machine on air. Once we go into ticker wizard here, what we're going to do is hit the rescan button. Since we already have our ticker BG background scene set up, we just need to rescan it. Now, once I rescan it, you see that this little gray box became active again, which means that it's going to allow us to click on here. And when we click on it, it's going to actually give us a new carousel that's available. So side slash side one is our carousel slash ticker that we just created. So I'm going to highlight it here. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to go ahead and check my side group, which is my template basically, or my text template. I'm going to go ahead and hit next and finish. Now what we need to do is actually jump over into ticker client to play it out. However, one thing I do want to mention at this point is when you are going into your ticker client to play it out, there is another little component here called start ticker service. And this will need to be running when you go to play out your scenes in ticker client. Again, depending how your configuration is set up, you may not all have it on the same machine. This may reside on a different machine. Now I do have my ticker service running, so we're okay. I'm going to go ahead and start our ticker client. I'm going to bring up artist so that we can see it and then switch over to our client here so that we can see it as well. Now that we brought up the client, I have one brand new tab in here called side one. The process is going to be the same. I have a new message that I can create here. So I can type in a city. I'll save that, drag it over. Let's type in another city here. Let's type in another city here. And maybe we'll do three cities just to see how this reacts. I'm going to drag this this one over and then create another one here. Hit save and drag it over. At this point I'm all set to test. If you need to add more information to your main tab you can certainly do that. It does keep it in there from the last time we did this. So I'm going to go into my main control here. We have four buttons now. We have a ticker system main, a program main, a main one, and a side one. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my ticker system main I'm going to turn on my program main and I'm going to turn on my main one. So when we bring this particular box on, you can see that it doesn't bring up the text. And this is okay because now we can have the opportunity to go jump right back into artist to see exactly what's going on with it. So if we go right into the server here, into our artist machine, if we go right to our side scroll, we can kind of troubleshoot as to what's happening. I have my bounding box on here. So very bottom, I can see that this might be off a little bit. So now all I need to do is just kind of bring this up and tweak it to where I need it. So here you can see our spacing was off a little bit. Now I'm just going to go ahead and save this and test this again. So again, I'm going to go to on air mode and then bring up my ticker client to run this again. So before I actually play that back, I want to go back into my ticker wizard and actually rescan the scene here. Now I can bring up my ticker client again and try to replay this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn all of my systems back on. And I'm going to turn this one on and turn our back on too. And now you can see that we, after making some more adjustments to our Z position and our position on our text container, it now comes up okay. Again, because I'm running this local host, when I turn this off, it doesn't actually clear out our uh, ticker on here or our service, so it keeps going. But again, this is just because I'm running on a local host here. Okay, from here, everything is looking good. So what I wanna do next is actually go ahead and add another part to this 
ticker. So I'm gonna jump back into artists and this time what we're actually going to do is create a flipping ticker.